Hey, this is Patrick Hoffman with a walk and talk about the source and summit of the Christian life. I'm talking about the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, transubstantiation. What is it? What's the Holy Eucharist? A habit has kind of crept into the Christian world to describe the Eucharist like this. It's the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Well, there is a truth to that, but that actually sounds more like the Lutheran notion of consubstantiation, not transubstantiation. So what's the difference? What's the better way to put it? The better way to put it is to say that uh, the Eucharist is Jesus. That's the more accurate way to say it. Because when the priest pronounces the words of institution, this is my body, not this represents my body, this signifies my body, this stands for my body, but rather in Luke 22 and Matthew chapter 26 and elsewhere, this is my body broken for you, take and eat it. Well, at that moment, what appears to remain bread in its appearance or its accidents is changed in what it is in its substance. What's it change into? changes into the whole Christ, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, the God-man. We are consuming, literally, physically, sacramentally, his glorified body. We are consuming him. Now, on first blush, this sounds a little bit strange, almost like cannibalism. And if you read chapter uh, 6 of John's Gospel, you can see that his hearers had the same reaction. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? The Jews started murmuring. There was dissension among the ranks. They doubted it. But Jesus got more and more and more explicit when he announces his real presence in John chapter 6. Starting about verse 35 or so, the context is they've just witnessed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish on the Sea of Galilee. And so they're already primed in a way to receive this word if they have ears to hear and eyes to see. But very few people accept it that day. Um, the greatest teacher in the world did not, <laughs> didn't have a very good track record of people who accepted the doctrine that he was announcing. In fact, when he got more and more literal and uses the, the Greek verb trogon to chew or to gnaw, his disciples started to leave. That's tough. When your band of brothers abandons you over this hard saying. So our Lord asks them, uh, you two gonna leave? And of course, Peter, it's always Peter speaking up for the apostles. Peter says, uh, Lord, to whom will we go? Where, where else is there? You're it, we believe what you've said because we believe that you're the son of God. And so that profession of faith is, again, confirms the faith of the church, thanks to the mouth of Peter. You can also see this in the witness of St. Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in which he warns people against receiving the body, of the, uh, body and blood of the Lord unworthily. He says you're guilty of the body and blood of the Lord if you profane the Holy Eucharist. And he says in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, uh, as an example, he says, some of you have gotten sick and even died from doing this. So, it's real. It's not symbolic. The symbolic only interpretation doesn't make any sense at all in light of the explicit teaching of Jesus and the reaction of his hearers. Because it's not like he's saying, uh, I am the door, therefore, you know, literally walk through me or open the knob on my head like Frankenstein or something, or um, I am the true vine, so climb all over me, literally. That's different in kind than saying, this is my body, which is what he said at the Last Supper. And then he said, do this in memory of me. Not write this, not, you know, ape this, but do this as a memorial of me. Well, this is what we've been doing for 2,000 years as Catholics hundreds of thousands of times, from the rising of his sun to its setting, as it says in the prophet Malachi, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is celebrated. It's the one perfect sacrifice. One way we know it's the perfect sacrifice is that it didn't have to be done twice. So that's the Eucharist. 
This is the bread of heaven. Every other time we eat food, whether it's animal, mineral, plant, or whatever, we're eating something that's lower than us in nature. But in the Eucharist, we're consuming food that is not just higher than us in nature, but infinitely higher than us in nature. So it kind of adds another layer of profundity to say you are what you eat, because what you're eating in the Holy Eucharist is God's very body.